Hey everybody and welcome to Das Studio. Before I get started with doing anything, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of this video. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically setting up a scene for one of my games and I thought I would just include you guys in the process basically. So I've already got my two characters for this scene loaded and I've already set up the scenes lighting to be as natural looking as possible there's already an HDRI there and so what I'm doing is I'm actually um, taking scenes for a conversation between these two characters and I still, uh, I'm basically taking a shot of the young boy's reply as he's having a conversation with his mother this was the poses that they were using for the previous scene so the mother character is just called her children down for dinner. The first person to attend was her son. She's just poured herself a glass of wine and looking at it and the son has walked in the room and said something to which she's responded. So now we need to record another response from the young character here. Now tip number one for doing this is to never reuse the same pose in every single picture. I noticed that a lot of people when they're doing renders for visual novels will set up the scene like this and then they will just take like 10 renders from different angles. And whilst that isn't necessarily a huge issue, if your, character, if your players are paying attention they will notice it. Um, and it can be kind of a bit of an immersion breaker. So for the sake of moving your characters ever so slightly to a different pose and a different expression, it just makes all the difference. So what I've got to do is select the character there, go into the smart content folder, and I'm just gonna choose another pose for this young fella, sort by function I know you can't see what I'm doing but I'm talking you through it as I go so we're going to uh, sort by function standing you're gonna find another standing pose for him something that's not gonna look completely ridiculous the, the issue that you tend to find with poses on the desk studio store is that they're all very exaggerated there are very few just kind of casual standing they're always gesticulating frantically about something so it's very difficult to find just casual looking poses that you can use for just standard day-to-day -day conversations so when you do find them you tend to find that you overuse them so that's that's why it's taking me a minute to find these because i don't want to overuse the uh, poses and expressions that i've already used or i'm going to use because again um you want to try and keep these things as 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 kind of natural feeling as possible and if you if every other picture a character is doing exactly the same pose it can be quite jarring so i found a pose there let's see if this is going to work yeah that's a fairly standard standing pose so we're just going to rotate him around a little bit because he is looking at his mum's eyes they're making eye contact or rather He's trying to make contact with her, but she's obviously looking at her, her wine glass. So now we're going to find an expression. So we'll close down that option, choose this one. As you can see, he's talking. So we want to have possibly another open mouth, another open mouth pose. We will see what comes available. There's again a lot of expressions that are available but most of them are extreme there are very few just kind of subtle talking poses so it's uh, it's again it's very difficult not to overuse them once you are once you start using them so it's let's have a look and see what we've got available to us A lot of you'll find again a lot of people either forget to put um, expressions in or they will use the same neutral or sort of <laughs> ambiguous expression in multiple shots and again <clears throat> for the sake of for the sake of you know a few seconds of choosing a good expression uh, it will make your shots look a lot more natural 
So, you know, take the time to do it, that's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect every time, but you just need... Uh, let's have a look. I'm thinking... Uh, see what this one is. He's already said something, so let's give him a kind of a closed mouth expression this time. Yeah, that works. Okay. So the once you've got your scene set up with your lighting and your props and all of that sort of thing, your work isn't done because you need to check that every shot is lit well. You know, you want it to be natural, but at the same time, you don't want it to be bland. You need to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of um, dimension to your shot. So in this shot, I don't think I'm actually going to have the mum character in the shot. But I do want to get a good angle that makes the character look alive. So I kind of like this angle. I'm going to pull up a character where a camera, sorry, where I've got the camera now. So we'll fix the mismatch. We'll just go with, um, I think I'm at C at this point. There we go. Right, so we've got ourselves a camera. We're going to immediately turn on depth of field. 22 f22 should be okay it might be a little bit narrow we will find out i'm kind of happy with this camera and um, angle and field of view so i am going to rotate and make sure that my focal distance is set to the character as near as damn it and it hasn't got to be like a massively shallow depth of field so we can pop to camera scene now now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide the mum character She's not in the shot, so it doesn't need to be. Uh, she doesn't need to be rendered. So we'll go to Nvidia Iro mode, and we'll see how this looks with the lighting, and then make any adjustments as necessary. So as we can see, the scene looks pretty natural. You can see out the window. So the 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 HDRI lighting is providing some luminance into the scene, but it's not overpowering the scene, and you can see the detail outside. So our young character is there. I'm not hating the lighting, but I'm feeling like I could probably throw in another light source over him just to give him a little bit more definition, a little bit more depth. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to jump back out of uh, NVIDIA Iron Mode into Texture Shaded Mode. And we're going to throw in another plane. And it's going to be a... It doesn't need to be big. It needs to be about half a meter in diameter. And then we need to copy our control C on our character and then control V on our plane. Uh, let's just check, did it actually copy everything across? Yes, apparently it did. So now we're gonna go up on the Y translate and we should see it popping up above him. So we're gonna just move it out of shot so it doesn't create a huge amount of spill light around him. We just wanted to light the character a little bit, just to add a little bit more to him. So we'll go to surfaces, go to plane, add an emission property, set that to white. Right, now I'm gonna jump back into NVIDIA Iron mode again, because I wanna see how much of a difference this will make to him, because this might actually cast a shadow right now, because it's not very bright. And there we go. So I've changed the properties to KCDMR2 and dropped the luminance down to 250. We don't need it to be so overpowering that it starts casting really bright light on the surfaces around him. We just want to add a little bit more definition under his chin and to add a bit more contour to the front of his body. So there you go. We've got our scene set up. We are pretty much good to go at this point. So I'm just going to hit the render button and we will see what happens. So yeah, I'll see you after the render. So here I got the uh, render into Photoshop. Normally I'd leave a render to cook for quite a bit longer than that, but for the purposes of making this video, I've skipped in a little bit early, as you can see. Now I'm deliberately manually oversampled this image. So if you go up to the full size scale of the image, you'll find that if I just go into Photoshop, you can see that actually there's quite a lot of noise in this, but as you can see, when you reduce it to standard screen size that noise goes now this technique is called manual oversampling and it's simply done by rendering the image bigger than you need it so when you shrink it down to the size that you're actually going to use it the noise is reduced 
Um, I don't really use that technique very often. It, obviously, in the purposes of creating this video, it's useful. But normally, I would just leave the renders to cook until they're finished because manual oversampling still isn't an optimal way of doing things in terms of image quality. It might be quicker, but the image quality is always going to be better if you just render the image um, properly in the first place. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm just going to quickly go to filter and I'm going to go to noise and I'm just going to go to despeckle and that'll just improve the quality of the image a little bit. And what I, what you're seeing in this image is that he might be in focus, but it doesn't look unnatural in terms of depth of field, but I still want to make him stand out a little bit more. And there's various different techniques that we can use from this. We can also add some kind of fogging effects, which are going to be um, obviously ideal as well and create some bloom as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to add that bloom effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of control shift alt and E now I'm, in this case we can just do control J because we haven't got multiple layers so we don't need to stamp visible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to go to threshold and then you can see here. Now what I want to do is I want to adjust the image so that only the absolute highlights on, I'm looking at him rather than the objects in the rest of the scene. So there's a bit of light on his nose, a bit of light on his collarbone and a bit of light around the back of his head. So I'm just going to bump that up a smidge to about just so it's a little bit different to about there. And I'm going to hit OK. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to add a blur. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur and I'm just going to bump this up a little bit as well about there just so that you can see a blurry light probably kind of more I'm thinking 6.8 let's see yeah that'll do now what we're going to do is we're going to add this as a screen layer and then as you can see it adds a little bit of a bloom effect but we don't want it around the whole of the image so I'm just going to go control I on a layer mask then I'm going to select brush with white and I'm just going to paint over that area like that so that's giving us a bit of a bloom on his face and then i can just reduce the opacity down until it looks a little bit more natural like that now i'm going to add a bit of window glare light coming in from the window in order to do that i'm going to select the edge of the window there I'm going to go like that perfect and then i'm going to grab my brush again going to select a highlight color and let's go with that one can always change it if we need to and then I'm just going to simply drag out a bit of that I'm going to, uh, change that edit undo brush tool. yep no we're okay and then just keep brushing it like this then I'm going to deselect and I'm going to add a couple of blurs first thing we're going to do is do a massive Gaussian blur on it like that and then I'm going to do a motion blur moving in the direction of the light travel, which is more, I want to say that. Yeah, that works. Okay, and then I'm going to change this to soft light, maybe. Is that okay? Yeah, that'll work. And then if I want to, I can add a overlay to that as well. I don't really need to because I'm quite happy with the result that I got there. But if I wanted to, I could always change the color to make it better. So I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to see what happens with different lighting options. So if I go to hard light, I can drop the opacity and that would be more. And then all I need to do is add a layer mask to that so that it's not over him because obviously the light's behind him. So you wouldn't be getting that bleed effect, those God rays going over his shoulder. So we select our brush tool and we go black. like that and then what you can do is you can create a new layer and perhaps we'll paint bucket it and we're gonna fill it with a paint bucket fill it with a warmer warmer color somewhere around there perhaps and then we're just gonna drop the opacity way down on this and this just gives us that little bit of warmth to the image 
and you can play around with that as much as you want. And again, you could change that to a, a soft light if you wanted to. And mess around with the opacity until you're happy with the end result. And for the purposes of this video, that'll do. There are other effects that I could possibly use, but this is just a case of just adding that little bit more detail to the image just to make it look a little bit better, a little bit more interesting for the viewer. And I hope you found that useful. Um, I hope there were some techniques there that you haven't tried before that you can give a go. Let me know think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, take good care of yourselves, guys. Bye-bye.